Okay, whatever. Anyway, GameRanks presents 10 facts about the Halo series you probably didn't know. The Halo series is arguably one of the Xbox's best game franchises. There's tons of Halo fans, including us, and we got a ton of info. So let's get started off with number 10. Red vs. Blue. Remember that series? It was all about the blue and the red Halo characters talking to each other, and it kickstarted Rooster Teeth into what we know them as today. Well, the series was created using a number of networked consoles in a multiplayer game session. Everybody controlled a character and moved them around according to their line, while one other person looked at them as the camera and recorded it. The dialogue and everything was added in afterwards. A lot of the Red vs. Blue videos took advantage of the game's quirks, and even took advantage of a glitch or two. In the videos they did based around the original Halo, a bug was exploited that made it so by holding a pistol and looking down, the character actually appeared to to be holding the pistol and looking up, kind of like in a normal, relaxed look. This bug was actually recreated later on by Bungie in Halo 2 just for the benefit of the show. For Halo 2, they got rid of the bug in the traditional sense, but Bungie also added it as a feature. Pressing down on the D-pad of the Xbox controller actually made the player appear to hold his or her weapon in a neutral position, without aiming it at anyone while looking ahead. This allowed Red vs. Blue to continue doing their thing, and it made sense for Bungie to do that because Red vs. Blue was exploding at the time, and not only giving them more popularity, but Halo games as well. At number 9, in the Halo 3 beta, the award for 10 consecutive kills with a shotgun was titled Cheney Mania. This is of course a reference to the US Vice President of the time, Dick Cheney, and his unfortunate hunting accident while he mistook his colleague for a wild bird and shot him in the face. People started pointing this out and laughing, but of course as everything that's funny, some people get pretty mad at it and unfortunately Bungie changed it with the final release to Open Season. Honestly, I don't think this ever would have happened if Dick Cheney just played Halo. Halo was popular at the time and he could have played it to get a better idea of his American people that he was representing, and then he would have probably done a much better job at hunting. He probably wouldn't have any friendly fire incidents and we wouldn't be be making fun of him up until this day. And at number 8, here's a weird little fact. In the three years of development of Halo 3, the Bungie development team consumed 20,000 pounds of pizza, 1,000 pounds of bananas, and 24,000 gallons of soda. Now that does sound like a massive amount of pizza and soda, but when you break it down over three years, it's kind of a normal amount. That being said, it does seem to be a bit above average. That is a lot of pizza. If you break it down, a pizza weighs about three pounds, has eight slices, so that's like about 52,000 slices, right? So for a team of around 350 people over three years, that's about a slice a week for everyone. So that's still a lot of pizza. That's a pretty ideal amount of pizza, having a pizza at least once a week. So good on Bungie. Halo 3, fueled by pizza. And if you don't think that's an important fact, I disagree with you because pizza is one of the most important things in the entire world. At number seven, the Master Chief voice actor Steve Downs was a longtime morning radio DJ in Chicago and Los Angeles, dating all the way back to the mid-1980s. He was best known for his evening broadcast at KLOS. He retired in February 2015, but still voices Master Chief to this day, because goddamn is that an awesome, perfect voice. I wish I could have listened to Master Chief on the radio on my way to work. At number six, you guys probably all know about that ill-fated live-action big-budget Halo movie that they were working on in the early 2000s. Yes, of course, I know you guys like to frequently point out to me that there is a technically a Halo movie, and it really is nothing compared to what they were working on and the people involved. Peter Jackson, a director of the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit trilogies, was originally signed on to work on Halo. Things were moving along, scripts were being developed, money was being thrown around, and a little-known South African director caught the eye of Peter Jackson. His name was Neil Blomkamp, and he was attached to direct the Halo movie around 2001. Unfortunately this feature film eventually fell through to all of our dismay, but Peter Jackson as a producer reportedly went to Blomkamp and offered him 30 million dollars to make whatever he wanted. The result was District 9, the awesome faux documentary science fiction movie set in the near future, and it was totally awesome, so in a way Halo is responsible for District 9. Thanks Halo! At number 5, technology developers at the US Marine Corps are currently working on a Project Hot Eagle, a program that when finished might be able to place squads of marines anywhere on the planet within two hours notice. This is very similar to the Halo series' ODSTs, or Orbital Drop Shock Troopers. They were UNSC soldiers that were responsible for dropping into any battle zone at a moment's notice and fucking shit up. They weren't Spartans, but they were the next best thing. And apparently the marines want that in real life. Launched by the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency and the Air Force Research Laboratory, marines are investigating into the development and use of suborbital spacecraft, which could launch any squad members on a suborbital trajectory in two stages and deliver them anywhere in, like I said, a two hour notice. Imagine that? Imagine that's what warfare will become. Soldiers dropping in in pods in the middle of a battlefield. It will be just like Halo, and it will be totally cool. I mean, I know war isn't cool, but I mean, the future and technology is cool, right? At number four, the dialogue spoken by the elite in Halo Combat Evolved was actually made by reversing and slowing down clips of Sergeant Johnson. The most common phrase the elite made in the original Halo? What, what, what? <laughs> 
which is the reverse phrase of Johnson saying, go, 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 go. This was of course back in simpler times when elites were dumb and you couldn't understand what they were saying. By Halo 2, they were developed to be much smarter and with their own understandable language. Canonically, this was thanks to human translators getting better between Halo 1 and 2. And while that's a funny bit of trivia, I'm kind of glad that Bungie gave the Sangheili much more to say in Halo 2 and the rest of the series, because they're really a fascinating race of sci-fi alien creatures. At number three, former Microsoft Vice President of Game Publishing, Ed Fries, programmed a Halo game designed to run on Atari 2600. He called it Halo 2600, and it featured only 64 screens worth of game. You can actually still play it in a browser or check out YouTube videos of it. It's pretty silly and really craptastic, but it can kind of give you an example of what the first video game players actually played. And it's pretty cool that it was made by one guy in his spare time, not to mention a head at Microsoft Xbox. It's good to know that he really knows his video games, right? And compare this game made by one guy to the team of over 200 that made Halo 5 Guardians. That's crazy. At number two, the US military designed a laser rifle called the Phaser Rifle. This rifle was designed to disorient and temporarily blind targets. Funny little smaller fact, it's actually illegal to develop weapons that can permanently blind targets. So that's why this Phaser Rifle only does it temporarily. But whatever about what it actually does, let's talk about what it looks like. It looks almost exactly like the Storm Rifle in Halo 4. This is just some cool shit we wanted to show you. And I mean, think about it. If the US military really put their mind to it, what other weapons could they develop that they take from video games. I'd really like to see a real world needler, but maybe with instead of exploding needles, maybe something more realistic like, I don't know, nails or poison darts. This is what I think about sitting in my basement all night. Thank you very much. Bam! Oh! At number one, let's talk about some legendary people. Let's talk about the last people logged onto Halo 2 before its Xbox Live shut down about six years ago. This is of course, for those of you that don't know, Halo 2 is now over 10 years old. The last 20 people ever logged into Halo were like little celebrities on the Bungie forums. They were spectated keeping active on forums or even some early Twitch channels, and they were slowly dropping out like flies. Some people's Xboxes were overheating, some people lost power, and some people lost internet connection. When it came down to the final two people on Halo 2 online ever, first guy was automatically booted by Xbox Live servers, and then shortly after that, the final guy as well. They played Slayer matches in Blood Gulch to the end, and they were really legends of their time. Not only were people on Bungie forums following them, but people at Bungie and Microsoft were cheering them on as well. It's crazy that a 10 plus year old game had such lasting power online. You don't usually see that in console games, you usually only see that in PC games, but I think that's what makes Halo so awesome. So shout out to those legends who stuck by Halo 2 to the end. Hey, you thought that was it, right? Well, we got bonus facts as well. Alan Tudyk, Adam Baldwin, <coughs> and Nathan Fillion all voiced Marines in Halo 3. Their characters were actually given personalities resembling the characters they played in Firefly. The original Halo in its early stages was actually a third-person Mac game. This first Halo was also supposed to originally have 25 levels rather than 10. Mac as Bungie's first platform for Halo made sense because Marathon was on Mac and Marathon was totally awesome. This is of course up until 2000 when Microsoft swooped in and bought Bungie. They made it an exclusive for Xbox and the rest was history. So guys, those were over 10 facts about the Halo series that we thought you should know. What do you think about these? And do you have any other interesting facts about the Halo series? Let's talk about them down in the comments. If you did have a good time with this video and maybe learned a thing or two, click the like button. It really helps us out and we totally appreciate it, for real. But the best thing you can do is subscribe if you're new because we put out videos like this every single day and you can learn a thing or two about games. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.